Hello and welcome to the HSC Safety Advice and Support Session for Remote Workers. My name is Ema Carl and I'm a Health and Safety Manager with the National Health and Safety Function and I will take you through this presentation today. The aim of this presentation is to provide you with practical support and advice for home working. Should you have any queries or comments following this presentation, please feel free to contact the National Health and Safety Functions Help Desk on 1850 420 420. Here you will be able to gain advice and support from a health and safety professional. So why did the National Health and Safety Function develop this programme? It was developed as a result of the recent COVID-19 pandemic where many of us have been asked to work from home based on public health advice and also as part of the government's return to work safety protocol. As an employee working from home, the HSE must provide for your safety, health and welfare through risk assessment and the implementation of adequate controls in the same way they would as if you were in the office. In addition, the recent European Agency Safety Campaign titled Lighten the Load which the HSC endorses, is aiming to raise awareness of musculoskeletal disorders, MSDs for short, their prevention and their prevention in the context of working from home. So what are musculoskeletal disorders and what are work-related MSDs? MSDs are impairments of bodily structures, such as the muscles, joints, nerves and bones that are caused or aggravated by work. These mainly affect the back, neck and shoulders and upper limbs, but can also affect the lower limbs. Most work-related musculoskeletal disorders are cumulative disorders. For example, they arise from repeated actions over a prolonged period of time. However, they can also be as a result of acute traumas, such as fractures and workplace accidents. Some interesting facts with regards to musculoskeletal disorders. Approximately three in every workers suffer with the musculoskeletal disorders. And this was as a result of a recent survey of European enterprises in 2019. So three in every workers experience back ache, stiff muscles or a sore neck as a result of work. The HSC is aiming to raise awareness about work-related musculoskeletal disorders and their management through the Lighten Our Load campaign. You will be able to find a lot more information on our website at www.hsc.ie forward slash safety and wellbeing. There are several types of MSDs. Some workers may experience the following, backache and neck pain, which are the most common conditions, joint conditions, which can be caused by wear and tear or disease and may also result as a result of accidents at work. Muscle injuries can be caused by strenuous and repetitive activities such as manual handling activities and bone conditions, typically result from an accident at work or a fracture. There are potential risk factors that contribute to musculoskeletal disorders and it's important that we take a few moments to go through those. We have broken them up for you into four distinct categories. Biomechanical and environmental, organisational, psychosocial and individual risk factors. If we look at biomechanical and environmental, we can break that down further into the handling of loads, poor posture and prolonged sitting, repetitive hand and arm movements and awkward or static postures. If we think about it from a remote working and a DSC worker, display screen equipment worker, we would tick some of those boxes under the biomechanical and environmental contributing factors. Organisationally, now that we are working from home, some of us are working longer working hours. 
The lack of breaks or opportunities to change work postures also has an impact in our risk of contributing to musculoskeletal disorders. Work that is set at a fast pace and working to tight deadlines also means that we spend longer working at the desk. And repetitive and monotonous work also contributes to MSDs. Psychosocial, lack of control over tasks and workload, unclear roles, heavy mental and cognitive workloads, and a lack of support from colleagues and or supervisors. As a remote worker myself, I would tick a few of these boxes as I read through them here myself. And then there is the individual contributing factors, prior medical history, physical capacity, age, obesity, and overweight. All of these help contribute or increase the risk of contributing to MSDs while at work. We're now going to take a few moments to look at a couple of slides and more importantly, slides relating to a home station work setup. Here is um, a person, an employee, working from home from a laptop, and this may be familiar to many of us. So I would like you to take the time to have a look at your own current workstation setup and see can you relate to a few of these issues. For the purpose of this uh, presentation, we're going to call the gentleman in the slide Larry. So Larry is working on a laptop, as you can see. He is working from home. It could be his kitchen table or a countertop. Larry does have a separate keyboard and mouse. And let's look at Larry's posture in a little bit more detail. At points one and two, you can clearly see that Larry's viewing angle and head and neck position are awkward. And this is because Larry is looking down at his laptop screen. Larry has to look down at the screen because it isn't raised up to the appropriate height to enable Larry to look straight in at the screen. As Larry looks down at the screen, he's placing a lot of pressure on the muscles and the nerves at the back of the neck. And some of us, if we think about it, may feel that uh, parts of the day we need to shrug our shoulders or we need to release the tension and stiffness in our upper neck. If you're having to do that, it might be worthwhile looking at the height of your monitor. And I will go through the optimal range that your monitor should be at in the next slide. So we can see here from the picture that the angle is quite steep, which results in the head and neck being flexed forward and causing a lot of pressure and buildup of tension and stiffness in the neck and shoulder muscles. So this engages all of the muscles at the back of the neck and shoulders, causing stiffness and soreness. This can be easily rectified if Larry can increase the height of his monitor so that he's looking directly on to the screen. Now, Larry is also in the very nice position of having his office chair at home. Not every one of us can do that, but where we can, we should. And I'll talk to you in a little bit more detail about that. Your office chair is probably your best friend with regards to DSE work, display screen equipment work. It helps support your natural S shape and when used properly can be a real support to all parts of your body. If we look at Larry a little bit more, we can see at points um, four, which looks at the forearm, Larry's arm is belt upwards at the elbow. This is because Larry isn't high enough to enable his arms to float over the keyboard. His hands and wrists should be at a level line to the keyboard. And if Larry were able to raise his height of his um, seat a little bit more, then that would allow him to adjust his arm level to be level with the keyboard. His wrist should be kept free from the desk surface and when using the mouse should be moved through a combination of elbow and shoulder movements. The wrist should not be involved in this. So Larry's forearm should be at a 90 degree angle with his upper arm. And as I said in this picture, Larry's elbow is lower than the wrist, causing the wrist to bend. In time, this will, may cause injury. So we have a couple of issues so far, just to recap. The height of Larry's monitor is inappropriate, so Larry has to look down at his screen, causing 
his head and neck to bend forward, which causes pressure and stiffness in the upper neck and muscles and the cervical spine area. Because Larry isn't high enough, it's causing his wrist to uh, have to bend. And this again will cause an effect, uh, a cumulative effect on his wrist in time to come. Because Larry has to look down, he is now perched at the front of his seat. And this is a very common mistake that many of us do. So right now, if you're working from your workstation, you should be pushing yourself back into the full seat pan to enable your uh, back and your spine to be supported adequately by the chair. Many of us find that we perch forward and that possibly could be due to the fact that we're not at the right height or due to the fact that we don't have the support at our feet to enable us to have a firm, stable base. If you recall a few moments ago, I suggested that Larry increase the height of his chair. If he does so, however, it's likely that Larry's feet won't be secured on the floor. So Larry may need a little foot rest. If you're at home, it could be a box or it could be a plastic box that will enable your feet to have a stable base on the floor and prevent you from sliding forward on the chair. This is really, really important for long periods of time at your workstation. So our target is to have our feet flat on the floor and the chair not to make contact with the back of the knees and the thighs are parallel to the floor. In this case, both feet are placed flat on the floor. There is no excuses or pressure on the back of the legs at all. So it's really important that we adjust our workstation setup to enable us to have a safe and ergonomic posture while at work. Some simple solutions here, and we'll go through them in the next slide more importantly, but just to recap on the benefits of bringing your chair home. If you have a good office chair, which should have a five caster wheelbase, height adjustability and back lumbar support adjustability, that is a real benefit because you can adjust to the height of your workstation, your kitchen table or your countertop, wherever you're working at home. So this is Larry set up using a laptop without any adaptation. And on the next slide, we're going to have a look at a optimal workstation setup. So here is, is the new and improved Larry at his workstation. You will see here that we've done some small uh, minor adjustments, which will enable Larry to sit at the optimal seated position while at his workstation. And if you look at the um, the lines, the white line in particular, you, you will see that it's very matchstick like and at 90 degrees where possible. And this is the optimal setup. Again, if you're sitting right now at your workstation, whether you're at home or in your office, you should really look and see how you are have set up your own workstation with this um, diagram in mind. So let's look at view, uh, Larry's viewing angle of the head and the neck. Bringing up the laptop, by using a stand or also by using um, some books has really helped Larry to view the uh, screen straight ahead. This allows the head to bring, be brought back on top of the shoulders, straightening the neck and the shoulders and the back. As I said, if you don't have a laptop, laptop stand, then it is really useful to use some books or reams of paper. This will improve your viewing angle. Again, when Larry is more upright, he can now start to use the full seat pan and support his lumbar back, that S shape in the base of your back. Larry is fortunate in that he has an office chair, but if you're working from a normal kitchen chair, perhaps the use of a cushion could aid and support you while you're waiting for your office chair. As I said, a cushion can be very useful to support a more upright, secure position. Now let's look at the forearms and the wrist position. We did say that this was a little awkward in the previous slide. And you can see here that Larry's after raising the height of his chair, enabling him to have a level uh, position of the forearm and that the forearm is floating over the keyboard, placing zero pressure on the wrists. If you are working from a kitchen chair that isn't adjustable, then you might 
consider putting some cushions on the base of the chair to enable you to raise your height here. Again, the focus is on placing the forearm in a neutral position with the hands and the wrists level. If you do have to increase your height, you will see very easily that you may or may not need a footrest. If your feet are not flat on a surface or the floor, then you will need a footrest and your feet should have a secure wide base. So this is important. If you're working from home, as I said earlier on, perhaps a plastic box might help or a, a cardboard box, or if you have a footstool in your office, then it would be a good idea to bring that home with you. It's really important to have your feet placed on a secure surface to prevent you from sliding forward on the chair. And it's very easy to uh, fix your position several times throughout the day when you have that secure uh, foot placement. So you see a very different Larry at his workstation here. The use of a laptop um, is frequently used in the HSC and where you can, you should have a portable or separate keyboard, mouse and screen. You can't adjust your laptop to suit your needs if it's fixed. That is, if you don't have a separate mouse keyboard. The screen may or may not um, be separate, but you can see here Larry's working off his that isn't separate. Really, really important though, to be able to adjust your workstation wherever you're working, if it's off the kitchen table or the countertop or a desk in a room very important to be able to adjust that and you can only really adjust it once you have a separate keyboard mouse and screen so what other things are we going to look at with regards to our workstation setup the next few slides we're going to talk about managers responsibilities and employees responsibilities and training and further supports it is important to note however that there is much more detail on our website regarding all of these um, responsibilities and roles for managers and employees. Our key focus here, and I said it at the very start of this session, is prevention. We're trying to prevent people from adopting poor postures and prevent the buildup of the risks in musculus, developing musculoskeletal disorders. For a manager, a manager must complete a risk assessment. And to enable that person, the manager, to do that task, then they must complete the following HSE land train, e learning training programs. They must complete the display screen equipment assessors module, the display screen equipment user awareness module, and managing health and safety in the healthcare setting. As a manager, you must complete with your staff the risk assessment over the phone, implement any control measures identified through risk assessment. And once the control measures are in place, continue to review and monitor to ensure that they're effective. If for any reason further assistance is required, you can always contact the Health and Safety Help Desk or engage in an ergonomist to support you. So as an employee, all employees who are classed as and identified as display screen equipment users must complete the display screen equipment user awareness module on HSE land. You must complete your risk assessment with your manager. And this is really important because you and only you know how you feel at your workstation. So it's very important that it's a collaborative piece of work. Talk to your line manager about any problems you may encounter. And if there's any medical reasons or concerns, you can always be referred to your occupational health department. It is very important for us all to engage in this process to prevent the risk of injury. Let's look at some further control measures. We need adequate space for our workstation. We need a dedicated area which keeps domestic interruptions to a minimum. So for myself here at home, while working from home, I have taken over the playroom so that I can shut the kids out and have some peace and quiet when um, I'm working. 
Again, not all of us have a playroom, and I know I'm very lucky to be able to do that. Um, but if you are in the kitchen area, maybe have a demarcated part of the kitchen table that's yours and that the family life doesn't encroach into that. Also be aware of the need for safe access and egress to your workspace, particularly with uh, the likes of cables, trailing cables and leads. Make sure you have adequate lighting while at work and have good standards of housekeeping to ensure that things are tidy and, and that everything is safe around your workstation. You can reference also the safety and health COVID-19 workstation hygiene uh, sheet that is available on our website. So to continue on from that, what we're going to look at next is work equipment. And this is really, really important because as an employee, you must be provided with the necessary equipment to carry out your work activities safely. This may include the use of laptops, monitors, keyboards, telephones and headsets to enable you to achieve a similar ergonomic setup that you can achieve at work. So as an employee working from home, you are allowed and permitted to take some work, essential work pieces of equipment home with you. This should be done following risk assessment and your line manager should also be aware of what you are taking and when. It's clearly very important to enable you to set your workstation up at home to an optimal position. You are encouraged to stand up and stretch and take regular breaks away from your laptop. I know from my own experience, having working from home for the last number of, of weeks, I certainly do a lot more sitting at home than I do when I'm in work because I'm not up and down to the printer as much. I'm not up and down to the canteen. I don't have stairs to walk up and down in the office. So I am much more sedentary now than I was when I was working in the office. As a rule and a little piece of advice I'd give um, people when you're thinking of introducing uh, movement or changing your posture, why not stand up when taking telephone calls or on a teleconference? It's a simple but effective way of introducing movement and ensuring that your blood circulation is uh, relieved and allowed to flow to other parts of the body not in use when you're in a seated position. And bear in mind, we can be in a seated position for quite a long period of time throughout the working day. There are further details available on how to access support in dealing with information technology system failures, software problems and equipment failures on the HSE's website for staff. So I've referenced the fact that I've been working from home for a number of months and I've also referenced the fact that I have been using the Playroom. So the next picture is actually my own home workstation setup. And you will see here that I have um, my, my office space set up nicely with my separate monitor, keyboard and mouse. I can't emphasize enough the importance of bringing these small pieces of equipment home with you because they are really important to enable you to set your workstation up safely. This is a desk that I already have, but you'll see there in the back underneath the monitor, that is my current laptop. I also have my headset with me that I brought from work because I am constantly on the phone while at work. So I can really mirror my workstation setup at home, similar, very similar to that in work. And I also have my footstool that I brought home from work and I can't manage uh, a good ergonomic posture without my footstool. It's hugely important. And before I, um, I brought the footstool home from work, um, I used one of those plastic boxes that are behind me in the second picture there. I upturned that and used that as a stable brace because I would slide off the chair and perch at the front of the chair if I didn't have that support to enable me to sit back into the chair fully. And there is my office chair. Again, a very important piece of equipment once we know how to adjust it properly and once we know how to uh, uh, change its position. And it's very, very important that we are, are taught how to do that or teach ourselves how to do, to do that effectively. You will find much more information 
on this particular subject on the HSE LAN program, which will enable you to really get into the detail of how to set your workstation up properly. So my advice is really to go on to HSE LAN and complete that training module. It is very informative and practical. So you see, that is my workstation set up. So again, as I said to you at the start of these few slides, it would be really good if you could take the time to, after this session, to look at your own workstation setup and see how you can improve it to ensure that ergonomically you are set up correctly. Let's move to the next slide. The next slide is another home setup scenario here on the left hand side. This is at a kitchen table, which is common to many of us currently at the moment. Obviously, the chair in use is not adjustable whatsoever. So the person has used a cushion to support their back a little bit more because it's deeper than a normal office chair. And if that was me, I'd have to increase the height of the seat and I'd have to use a couple of cushions on the seat pan as well. Again, because um, of my height, I would need to have a foot um, support, a box or a footstool underneath that desk. Again, working at the di dining table here, you can see how um, this person on the right hand side, this gentleman, has increased the um, height of the monitor by using books, which we would all have at home. Again, he's only able to do this effectively because he is using a separate keyboard and mouse. That's hugely important, a simple thing that will enable you to work better. Laptops by definition are only to be used for short term use and not long term eight hour day shifts. So let's continue on a little bit. Your work um, station and your workplace, if it's at home, has to be nice and comfortable for you. So think of the temperature. When you're at home, if you're too cold, you may feel more distracted and lose some dexterity in your hands and fingers. If you are feeling cold, perhaps getting up and moving would help warm you up and also introduce badly needed movement throughout your working day. When you're too warm, you can be uncomfortable and tire more quickly. So aim for between 21 and 24 degrees, ideally 22. Consider this. When spending 90% of our time indoors, consider your air quality. Let fresh air in through the windows or more importantly, and to uh, adopt a practice of getting more movement in, take a 10 minute walk around the block, get outside for a few minutes. It will do a huge amount of benefit both to your body, your physical health and your brain, your mental health. Perhaps you need to look at adding a lamp to your desk to increase the light levels. Illuminating your work area and documents as opposed to the screen is hugely beneficial because it prevents you from having to uh, perch your head and look at the documentation closer. Try to create a workspace away from your living space to reduce noise distraction. If you can't wear earphones or headphones to take calls, then perhaps it would be better to have a quiet area to do that. You could consider adding music to the background or white noise that might help you be more productive. Creating a good atmosphere around your work area, including natural light, plants, flowers and artwork, will help increase your mood and improve your mood. Also very, very important to realise that sometimes working from home can feel like Groundhog Day. The same process, the same day, over and over again. So it's really good to disengage from your workplace and your house by getting out and uh, getting some fresh air and seeing something different in the day, particularly when we're coming into the winter months. Let's look at some simple exercises that you could do while at your workstation. Really important to introduce movement and some of us may already be practicing these work exercises while in our workplace. Regular exercises for the upper body will really have a beneficial effect on our posture, on relaxing our muscles and giving relief to sore or exacerbated areas. These are simple and effective to do and you can do them from a seated position also. 
These are available on our website, so print them off and have them available to you throughout your day or perch them on the wall so that you can reference them throughout the day also. So the next area is all looking at our well-being while at work and while remote working. So, so far we have spoken about the physical aspects of our work. So let's look at our mental well-being. So working from home is not natural for us in the HSC and it does take time and effort to make work and to get used to it. So it's really important that you have clear and appropriate lines of communication with your line manager and your team so that you can continue to feel connected to your team, your management and your work. So we have to realise that some of our staff may feel isolated, fatigued or be stressed from working from home. As I said, it's really important to have that formal agreed scheduled communication system in place for our staff. And it's very simple and effective to put into place. Staff should also be encouraged to keep regular contact with other colleagues. It doesn't have to be as a result of a query or a question on work. It could be just to check in and also to know the supports that are available to them through HR and our employee assistance program and through occupational health. There are an awful lot of it. There is an awful lot of information on our website relating to the other supports that are out there for you. So staff well-being and supervision. When staff are working from home, it is important, as I said, that they have clear role clarification and know what is expected of them. This is really important because it can cause quite a bit of stress and anxiety for employees who are now having to adopt to a different way of working and also a different manner and working relationship with their colleagues and their management. Having an agreed check-in period or check-in time with staff will provide an opportunity for updates and to keep the engagement levels high and to be provided on work-related information and feedback. And considering the movement and changes in COVID-19, even to relate to the newest and latest guidance for this pandemic to keep all of us safe in work. Our own work-life balance. It's hugely important and more so now than ever. Working from home does take time to get used to and it does impact us. So we need to make sure that we have a balance with regards to our working life and our personal life. While working from home, please ensure that you take regular breaks and exercise and practice good self care. These can all help maintain a healthy work life balance. Recently, the Irish Heart Foundation launched Escape Your Chair program. And this is very, very interesting. And it has a very useful tool to calculate your sitting period of time throughout the day. And anyone who has uh, logged on to the website and actually completed the calculator are very surprised at how many hours they spend sitting throughout the day. So why not try it yourself and calculate your hours? and see if you can reduce the hours that you sit. Remember, if you're taking a phone call, you don't have to sit down to do it. Also, it's nice to have a physical calendar there to remind you to actually get up and move. Simple but effective. And why not print one off for the month and see if you feel better? Remember, your work-life balance is extremely important. So staying mentally fit, as I said, working from home is alien to most of us. So don't be too hard on yourself. You may be trying to work around childcare, schooling and other commitments. If you are struggling, talk to your line manager or your HR department. If you are feeling anxious or low, there are a number of, of supports available to you through the HSC and other areas. You can also contact your GP if you find that you need to. GPs are still doing telephone and visit video consultations. Another uh, piece of advice was to be make sure that you're getting enough sleep. So you may be working different hours to fit in other commitments. Make sure you don't end up running on empty. 
set yourself boundaries and stick to them. For example, please don't look at emails between certain times of the day or night. Try not to work on your scheduled days off and make sure that you're not too hard on yourself. As I said, I'm working from home and sometimes it's very easy to do an extra hour in the evening or to go back into the office again to finish off something that you started. So watch those practices so that they don't become the norm. If you are missing your colleagues, why not set up a regular weekly coffee morning or coffee break? Again, it's just nice to check in. Use the WebEx or the Microsoft Teams, whatever way you have of seeing your uh, colleagues or just give them a phone call. It's very important to stay connected, particularly when you're working remotely. And make sure you have some downtime. The lines between home and work can become very blurred. So try and get some fresh air, get outside for a period of each day and make sure you get out into nature. These are all methods well documented in terms of maintaining good mental health and well-being. As I mentioned earlier, line managers play an integral part in the organisation and business continuity by aiding the transition of working on site to working from home during COVID-19. There are lots of supports available to employees and managers can assist our employees on knowing where those supports are and how to engage with them. Further supports have been set out in a recent HSE policy developed by our Human Resources Department. This policy, which is titled Policy on Public Health Service Employees Working from Home During COVID-19, sets out clear roles and responsibilities. It is in this policy that guidance is provided on the equipment necessary to work from home safely. There is also guidance on duties of employers and employees under the Safety, Health and Welfare at Work Act and the role of the line manager, which is, vital, which is a vital connection for employees during this pandemic. Ensure new employees and all employees working from home have the correct equipment. Again, this should be based on risk assessment and the equipment taken home should be agreed. For our staff, all employees have a responsibility to ensure, as far as reasonably practical, that they maintain a safe environment while working from home. This would be in accordance with their obligations under the Safety, Health and Welfare at Work Act 2005, and also to comply with the guidance from their manager. Employees must remain contactable during working hours and productive in their work. Employees must adhere to the organisation's policies and procedures in the normal manner. They must participate in online teleconferencing meetings and protect themselves and others from harm during the course of their work. For example, to take care of any equipment provided and report any issues without delay in the normal manner. Employees must notify the line manager if they have a disability or are a sensitive risk group, such as pregnant employees or those with mobility needs. Employees must be available and contactable to their colleagues and line manager throughout their working day. Employees must also cooperate with work priorities and timelines and request support or assistance if required. Employees must comply with the organisation's arrangements for recording working hours and rest breaks, and they must also inform their line manager if they are unable to work on any given day due to illness in the same way that they would if they were working from the office. So all of these guidelines and roles and responsibilities are clearly set out in this policy under section three, five and seven. And section seven details the further supports that are available to staff while working from home. Let's take a moment to look at those supports. One of them is to review the technology and the equipment necessary to provide staff with a safe working environment. So if we look at technology and equipment, we're looking at considering um, the types of devices in use, the immediate access to technical support via the help desk or phone number, any security firewalls, etc., that are in place, and the methods and contingencies for fixing devices used for work. 
Make sure that employees are aware that they have a responsibility to take the necessary precautions to safeguard their equipment and ensure that appropriate policies are followed with regards to personal data, GDPR and security. Requests from employees to bring appropriate office equipment home based on risk assessment should be facilitated by their manager. This will enable employees to engage in a posture that will provide for their safety and health. Removal of equipment from the workplace should be documented, thereby ensuring there is an appropriate audit trail. A manager should give particular consideration to those needs of employees who have a disability or who, or who are sensitive to risk, for example, pregnant and mobility needs staff. We must provide reasonable accommodation where appropriate and as far as practicable. There is lots of further guidance available from the HSE's own website. And this is it. So if you want more um, information, because this is a short presentation on practical supports, then you can avail of more information at the HSE's website, and it's the staff website there. I have also referenced here the working from home policy that details what is required by line managers and employees with regards to working from home. Further information is available on our own National Health and Safety Functions website. We have a COVID-19 health and safety guidance banner here and the section details lots of support and advice from working from home. To gain access to the website, please log on to the uh, staff and careers tab and go down to the safety and well-being tab on the left hand side or log on to www.hse.ie forward slash safety and well-being. To just recap again on the information that's available to you, we have some homeworking guidelines under COVID-19. We have a homeworking risk assessment which must be done by the line manager and the staff member. We have working from home COVID-19 workstation setup guidelines and health and safety COVID-19 workstation hygiene. These are all really relevant under the current climate and you should be familiar with all of those. In addition to all of the above, there is also the incident management framework which must be followed um, and you must ensure that any incidents or accidents are reported in a timely manager, manner to your line manager. You must comply with professional codes of conduct as they relate to incident management also. There is further guidance and additional resources available on the Health and Safety Authority's website. They have recently published the guiding, guidance on working from home for employers and employees that emphasises most of what we've discussed today. This publication was uh, released in October of this year as a result of the increased number of staff working from home. Some very good tips and guidance there for you also. And as I said earlier on, please don't hesitate to contact us on the National Health and Safety Functions Help Desk. You will find the number 1850 420 420, uh, which is also the Healthcare Worker COVID-19 Help Desk and just asked, ask to be recorded to Health and Safety. Again, you can also log on to our website and log your call uh, or your request for Health and Safety uh, training, information, support and advice. I do hope you found this presentation of benefit to you. I do hope you take the time to look at your workstation setup and to implement some of the practical guidance that we have gone through. And as I said earlier on and throughout this presentation, Working from home is not natural for a lot of us. We do miss our colleagues and the support of our line manager. If you do feel that you are in need of extra support and guidance, please refer to the help desk and do discuss it with your line manager. Thank you again for your time.